we're going to visit briefly about hearing protectors such as earplugs and ear muffs. Now it's always best if we can use engineering controls to eliminate or reduce noise at its source. But if we've implemented engineering controls and workers' daily average noise exposure is still above 85 decibels, then we may need to use personal protective equipment to help reduce the worker's noise exposure. Now, hearing, hearing protectors vary greatly in their effectiveness. Uh, the most effective types of hearing protectors tend to be ear muffs followed by formable earplugs, which are designed to be inserted into the ear canal. The least effective type of hearing protectors are usually devices that are sometimes referred to as canal caps that don't actually go into the ear canal, but sit on the ear canal surface. Hearing protectors sold in the U.S are marked with a noise reduction rating, or an NRR. For instance, these ear muffs have a noise reduction rating, or NRR, of 31. That means that under ideal circumstances, these muffs might reduce a worker's noise exposure by as much as 31 decibels. Similarly, these formable foam earplugs have a noise reduction rating of 30 decibels, meaning that under ideal circumstances, these earplugs might reduce a worker's noise exposure by as much as 30 decibels. Now, at the lower end of the scale, these canal caps have a noise reduction rating of 23 decibels, meaning again that under ideal circumstances, these hearing protectors might reduce a worker's noise exposure by as much as 23 decibels. Now in practice, many different factors have an impact on the effectiveness of hearing protectors. For instance, if I wear these ear muffs, the seal between the ear muff and my head is broken by the temple of my glasses. Also, my hair interferes somewhat with the seal. If I'm extremely sweaty or dirty, that can have an impact. If I bump the hearing protector, that breaks the seal to some extent. But for a variety of reasons, I should not expect uh, to have my noise exposure reduced by the full amount of the noise reduction rating uh, that's marked on the product. Formable foam earplugs have even more opportunities for being less effective than the noise reduction rating would suggest. Uh, for instance, if my ear canals have an unusual shape, let's say they're very crooked or very small, that may make it hard for me to get a good fit. Uh, also, it takes some skill and practice to get these inserted properly. And if I've not had the training, if, I've, if I don't take the time to do it correctly, those kinds of things can keep me from getting a good fit with formable foam earplugs. And so I should expect that my actual noise reduction will be substantially less than the noise reduction rating that's marked on the box. Now canal caps such as these tend to be the least effective types of hearing protectors. And one of the main reasons for that is that these caps do not fit tightly and they do not seal well against the ear canal. Now, as we try to estimate the actual noise reduction that we'll experience when we wear hearing protectors in the work environment, there are several things we have to keep in mind. First of all, when we measure noise in a work environment, we typically program our noise dosimeter to measure according to the A scale, which is a specially weighted scale that accounts for the sensitivity of the human ear to different frequencies of sound. Now, in contrast, the NRR, or the noise reduction rating that accompanies the hearing protector, that NRR is measured according to the C scale, which is not weighted according to human sensitivities. To account for the difference between the A scale and the C scale, we have to subtract seven decibels from the noise reduction rating of the hearing protector. 
Now, even after accounting for differences between the A scale and the C scale, research shows that hearing protectors are quite a bit less effective than the noise reduction ratings would suggest. For instance, earmuffs are about 25% less effective than the noise reduction rating would suggest. Formable foam earplugs are about 50% less effective, and canal caps are about 70% less effective than the noise reduction rating indicates. Now, based on these limitations, we can calculate a more realistic noise reduction that we might expect to achieve in practice. For instance, these earmuffs have a noise reduction rating of 31 decibels. Research shows that the actual noise reduction will be about 25% less than that. In other words, we can expect a noise reduction of about 23 decibels. Now, if we've measured our environmental noise according to the A scale, then we have to subtract another 7 decibels to account for the differences between the A scale and the C scale. This leaves us with a much more realistic noise reduction expectation of about 16 decibels. This means that if I'm working in an environment where the noise level is 100 decibels and I'm wearing these earmuffs, I can expect that my actual exposure will be about 84 decibels. Now keep in mind that formable foam earplugs are even less effective than earmuffs and if we perform these calculations with formable foam earplugs, we have to subtract 50% from the noise reduction rating. Canal caps are less effective still and we would need to subtract 70% from their noise reduction rating. Now, for earplugs to work properly, we have to get a good fit. And in order to get a good fit, there are several things that we need to do. First of all, we need to make the diameter of the earplug smaller so that it fits more easily into the ear canal. And we do that by rolling it between our fingertips. As you can see, it gets quite a bit smaller and then it will expand in the ear canal. Another thing we have to be concerned about is that the ear canal is straight, it's actually crooked. And in order to get the, uh, the ear plug to fit in there well, we have to straighten out the ear canal. And we do that by pulling up and back on the ear as we insert the ear plug. Once we get the ear plug in the ear canal, we want to hold it in place while the foam expands. If we don't do that, the earplug will push itself out of the ear canal and we won't have a good fit. But as this, uh, as this foam is expanding in the ear, uh, the, the, the sound properties of the room begin to change, uh, sounds start becoming muffled out of that ear, and that gives us some indication that we're getting a reasonable fit here. After a count of about 20 to 30, the earplug should be fully expanded and we can go ahead and take the finger away and do the other side. And we do it in the same way. We roll the earplug to make the diameter smaller. Then we pull the ear up and back to straighten out the ear canal. And we hold the earplug in place for a count of about 20 to 30 so that it can expand and, and fill, fill the ear canal rather than pushing itself out. Now again, as this happens, the sounds in the room should become very muffled. And once, once we have our earplugs in, we want to check the fit. And the way that we check the fit is by placing our cupped hands over our ears and then pulling them away. If we do this in a noisy environment, the sound level should seem about the same whether we've got our, our hands over our ears or not. And that gives us an indication that we've got a good fit. As we're working, the earplugs may become loose. If that happens, we can check periodically like this. If we find that at some point in time we don't have a good fit, we need to remove them, uh, go through this procedure again, 
and, and get a good fit before we continue working. Now when we take our earplugs out, we don't want to just pop them out like a cork on a champagne bottle. Uh, that creates a, a, a press, pressure differential that could damage the ear. Instead, we want to twist and gently pull the earplug out. Pull it out gently while twisting in order to re release the pressure gradually. Now once we've removed the earplugs from our ears, uh, these are disposable earplugs. They're designed to be thrown away after one use. Uh, some earplugs are made of a different type of plastic and they can actually be washed and used again. To review, we use hearing protectors to reduce any exposure to loud noise that may remain after we've implemented engineering controls. The manufacturer's noise reduction rating, or NRR, indicates the maximum reduction in sound intensity that we might achieve with a hearing protector under ideal circumstances. To estimate the actual noise reduction we're likely to experience in a realistic environment, we reduce the NRR by 25 to 70 percent. If we measured our noise exposure using the A scale, we also subtract another 7 decibels because manufacturers' NRRs are determined using the C scale. After making these calculations, we find that realistic noise reductions are much lower than the manufacturer's NRRs would indicate. When using formable foam earplugs, we first roll the plug between our fingers to reduce its diameter. Then we straighten the ear canal by pulling up and back on the ear. After inserting the earplug, we hold it in place as it expands. We check the fit in a noisy environment by making sure we don't notice much difference in sound intensity when we place our cupped hands over our ears. When removing earplugs, we twist and pull gently so that we don't damage the ear with a sudden change in pressure. 